Love this podcast? Support this show through the ACAST supporter feature. It's up to you how much you give, and there's no regular commitment. Just click the link in the show description to support now. Before we jump into our wrestling talk, let's talk hydration. See, I carry something to drink with me every single place that I go because I am concerned about being dehydrated. It runs in the family. Everything from dry mouth, dizzy spells, fainting, it's pretty serious. And I've tried all the different types of waters and sports drinks. Let me tell you something right now. Liquid IV. That has been the most efficient at keeping me hydrated and doing so pretty quickly. Okay, Liquid IV has five essential vitamins and is two times faster at keeping you hydrated than water alone. And I'm serious, man. Everything from vitamin C to vitamins B3, B5, B6, B12. Liquid IV also is non-GMO. So it's free from gluten, dairy, soy. So for all you folks out there with food allergies, this may be right up your alley. And I know what you're thinking, but how does it taste, Duke? Well, it tastes pretty good. Okay, we're talking my favorite in pina colada. They also have tropical punch, strawberry, new flavors like sea berry and strawberry lemonade. Huh. You can enjoy this stuff, man. But don't take my word for it. I want you to stop what you're doing right now and head over to liquidiv.com. Use the promo code Duke Loves Wrestling so you get 20% off your entire order. I mean, anything that you order on liquidiv.com. So what are you waiting for? It's time for you to shop better hydration today. Use the promo code Duke Loves Wrestling over at liquidiv.com. Save yourself 20%. Stay hydrated. Most importantly, enjoy life. That's right. Now let's get on with the show. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubblegum. This is Austin Aries, and you're listening to Duke Loves Wrestling. You know, it's it's interesting with you because I, I know that you're not a, a social media guy, but yeah. you're one of the few wrestlers that I talk to who actually manages his own social media. There's, there's so many <laughs> people who uh. are so careful about that. So so what is this about you where you're you're actually handling all that stuff yourself? The idea of someone else uh again, like being my voice, uh and then putting that out there to the you know to the masses. It seems uh, it doesn't have any authenticity behind it, right? It's kind of weird. Like uh, then I would have somebody else kind of represent who I am and manage that. But I suppose if you're so busy with all these other things, you don't have time for that. But I don't know. It just seems weird to me. But yeah, no, I, I manage all my own. Um, yeah. So do, uh, do you feel like you'd be in less trouble if uh, somebody else was speaking for you? Oh, uh, definitely <laughs> would have been a lot. <laughs> If I would have hired somebody to do that, I probably could have could have uh, navigated around a lot of this stuff easier. Probably would probably be a whole lot less trouble. Some of the stuff I put out there, you know. But I thought that's what it was. It was, you know, supposed to be an extension of of uh, your thoughts. But I, I don't know. I've, I've never really, I haven't really mastered the social media game. This love hate relationship with it, and uh, so yeah, I'm on there sporadically, but certainly haven't used it to its. Uh, Full potential, I suppose. What is it about you, uh, Aries, where you're a guy that throughout the years, when prompted, and and I want to make sure I'm clear about this, when prompted, you're not necessarily somebody who's going around trying to uh, preach to everybody, but when prompted, you're you're not afraid to speak your mind. And and truly, it's an authentic person because it doesn't always come out perfectly. Where does that spirit come from? The, the ability to just say how you really feel without trying to filter it, so to speak. I, I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's just how it is. Um, I couldn't imagine f- filtering myself in that way. Uh, I, I guess I've always been a, a truth seeker. 
right? Like that it, it interests me. Uh, and then I've always just kind of been a truth teller. I, it's just, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's not something I've even really consciously thought about. I think it's just my personality type. Uh, and along those lines too, like, you know, like my real name's Daniel, right? Like it's that's not Austin Aries. That's a, you know, that's the, that's the persona that gets switched on, you know, when it's, when it's time to do the pro wrestling thing um, and be able to separate those things uh, becomes important. But um, I've never seen, I've never really made much sense of the world. I mean, even as a kid, it's, it's trying to wrap my head around the, the current structure, right? Like what we've like we've been given paradise, uh, utopia, all the natural resources and beauty, um, and like the the system that we've created, just it, it never it it just never connected with me. So you start asking questions. Well, how did it get like this, and why is it like this, and why do we have an epidemic of people starving to death and people eating themselves to death at the same time? Right? Like, how's that possible? Uh, it's just so you start seeing the world differently and you start asking questions and you do question everything. And pretty soon you find yourself um, on the fringe a little bit and you don't really fit in anyone's box that they've been kind of uh, programmed to put you in. Right. in this very binary mindset of your, uh, you know, your Republican Democrat, right. Left, right, blue, red, rich, poor, uh, white, not white, straight, not straight, what religion, like all these things, all these parameters. And um, and so you don't fit in any of those neatly. So then you kind of become a target from all the different sides. Uh, so a lot of times it's easier just either keep your mouth shut or just say what everybody else is saying, you know? You know, that's that's really, really interesting because listening to you give that response, I'm thinking back to a documentary that, Mercedes Renato, mm. Sasha Banks, whatever you want to call her today. She, when she went away from WWE uh, for a little while and then she came back, they did a documentary on her and, and she talked about the fact that she had gone about close to seven years without hearing her real name. Mm. Yeah. Everyone's calling her Sasha. Right. Everyone is is identifying her as the character and essentially forgetting that there's actually a real person behind that. So the, the method acting starts getting blurry there. Mm. How do you turn it off, man? Because it, it seems like at least today, you're pretty clear on the separation between who Austin Aries is and who Daniel is. How do you turn that off? Uh, well, I, I had to, for me personally, I had to just, I had to leave. Or I had to get out of the bubble for a little bit. You know, when you spend, for me, 20 years... And, you know, or, or Mercedes, you know, uh, you know, her example, the same, like when you're on 24 seven and you know, and you interact with and know far more people in your day to day life now that know you as this character, Sasha or Austin, or whatever it might be. And that's how they look at you and they address you and they perceive you because they only know you in those terms or first and foremost in those terms. Um, it's easy at some point to start losing yourself in that because there's, there's what's the alternative, right? Um, so for me, you know, through events that were going on in, in the world and in my own personal life, it, I felt like the universe kind of forcefully spit me out of the wrestling bubble uh, to kind of save me, right? To give me that um, perspective for the first time in really my whole adult life. Cause I started doing this at 22 uh, and, and, I don't think most of us know who we are really at 22. Um, you know, some of us still don't know who we are at 42 or 52. Right. Uh, so yeah, I'd spent this whole, uh, my whole, like <clears throat> from 22 up in this persona. And after a while, um, yeah, you, you sit and ask yourself, well, do you know, like where one stops and one starts, have you put as much time into creating who Daniel is? as as much time as you put into creating who Austin Aries is, the character. You know, and if there's not if there's not balance there, you could be setting yourself up for uh, you know, for for a fall at a certain point. Unless you just want to live your whole life as that character. You spent some time 
outside of the United States for a while. I mean, obviously you traveled all over the world as a pro wrestler, but you know, not Austin Aries, but Daniel went on a journey that eventually took him to India. Talk mm-hmm. to me about that journey. Well, you know, we're in the midst of, um, you know, if we re- rewind, go to like the midst of uh, COVID, like right as that's starting to unfold. I was living in Vegas um, and felt like the universe was telling me that that's not where I belong. Uh, a bunch of events that were kind of that happened there. And so, yeah, I, I sold I sold my place and I went to Mexico for a year without a real plan other than just to get out of the U.S. for a while. Um, try to find some places where there was, it was a little more normal and you weren't, uh, kind of surrounded by the whole epidemic of fear that, that it was kind of perpetuated on us. And, um, and just through that experience, uh, you know, you're down there, um, you know, almost a year and a half off from any wrestling, uh, you know, from there, I then went and spent some time, uh, in Spain for a bit. I actually went to Saudi Arabia to wrestle. I uh, was over there for for a couple of weeks, few weeks. So I got to see that culture, um, and then yeah, and then ended up in India for for three months, and uh, you know, studying uh, yoga studies over there, and just trying to for my own practice, deep my own practice um, of the different limbs of yoga, which you know we think of the movement, the the postures as yoga in the Western culture, but there's really eight limbs to yoga. That include uh, other things like pranayama breath work and, and meditation um, and chanting mantras and all sorts of things. So that's just my where my own personal journey took me, right? Uh, to just, you know, continue to seek truth uh, in the world around me and then within me. And um, so now coming back to wrestling, it's uh, it's it's. A little weird at times, uh, but th- the perspective uh, for me, I think, is much healthier as I move forward with whatever I decide to do for however long I decide to do it. You know, there was a, a very serious situation that happened during the pandemic where online the the Me Too movement started and, and speaking out and, and what have you. And a lot of folks were called out for whatever behaviors, whatever, your name popped up and it was a big story and you reacted to it, which it was uncommon. A lot of folks did not react or didn't say much. You know, they probably got with their lawyers and and made sure that they had prepared statements uh, a certain way, but no, not Austin Aries. You came with with, with, uh, receipts and (laughs) you were ready to to hash this out and, and, and get detailed and what have you. So I, I ask you this: Did you do what what, what you were accused of doing? Well, uh, let me answer a question with a question. What was I accused of doing? Sexual harassment, uh, you know, making people feel uncomfortable, that sort of thing. But like specifically, what was I accused of have done? Because the sexual harassment thing, right? Like now, we that that goes back to the Christy Hemi situation with the ring announcer, which was in. 2013 and so a lot of people used that incident which was a lot of things but it wasn't sexual harassment um you know was it a miscalculation on my on my part uh in the moment of just trying to be a bad guy on tv sure um but so yeah so i i like what was i accused of doing exactly right um specifically uh but when you have the narrative with the the ring announcer incident that now you've been attached to to the word sexual harassment um it creates a picture in people's minds and therefore you know other things stick so uh, listen i i could rehash all this and we could talk about specifics and i could tell you know um my perspective and sides of whatever specific stories are out there. But I also realized um, that people are going to believe what they want to believe. Right. And the people who know me, who actually know me in my real life, um, they know who I am and they, and they certainly uh, don't believe any of these things of me. Um, People who don't know me, who want to believe, you know, 
second, third hand accounts, uh, things that are sent on the internet, headlines that are put up that don't have any basis of fact. Um, we're going to believe what we want to believe. We're, we're, we're now in a society where we get to pick and choose what information, what facts uh, or truths we want to believe and which ones we don't. Um, and, you know, we can just call it fake news if we don't want to believe it. And we just keep whatever belief system in our brain we want. So um, I can't spend the rest of my life trying to convince a bunch of people who don't know me, who've never interacted with me, that I'm not their interpretation of who I am. Everyone that you meet in life is going to have their their version of you based on their own personal experiences and prejudices or whatever they may have, right? So every person you come in contact with based on their own personal experiences and prejudices are going to have their version of you and everyone's version of you is going to be different. And the only version of you that really matters is the one that you hold within for yourself. And if you're right with that one, then everyone else's uh, version of you uh, becomes less relevant and less important in your journey. Um, and like attracts like, you know, so you can start to see who you're surrounding yourself with and who you're resonating with. And, you know, those opinions start to matter far more than those of, of people who are outside that circle. You know, you're a young guy uh, in terms of real life. But in terms of wrestling years, you're pretty long in the tooth, brother. I mean, you, you yeah, spent man. a lot of years in the business, right? Yeah. And Tell me about it. <laughs> Do you ever reflect back on your career? I mean, are we are we at a point now where we can do that? Uh, I mean, it happens from – I think it's natural, right? Uh, I've really been focusing on not spending too much time in the past or in the future and just trying to really appreciate here. Because um, one thing I do take away from now, my journey was like maybe how much of it I actually missed – um, in, in a sense, because I was always focusing maybe on the destination or what ha what had happened previously. And I'll see like, oh, wow, 24 years. Holy cow. That went kind of quick. Right. Um, so now just trying to actually savor the moment and be there instead of uh, in the past or in the future. But uh, hey, man, uh, I've had a lot of fun. You know, I, you know, I, I do read from time to time, you know, people uh, commenting on, um, especially because, you know, I didn't have a long lucrative uh, WWE run, you know, um, if people consider like my career, like a failure or a what, what could have been type of thing. Uh, and like, and I, like, I never thought of it like that. Uh, I'm like, man, look at all the cool shit I did for the last 20 plus years. You know, like, look at all the places that took me around the world, all the people I've met, all the growth I've had as a person. Um, I've been able to provide for myself, never um, really feeling like I had to nine to five type of uh, where you feel like you're owned, man, like a slave. Like you just you feel trapped and you're just getting it like I've been able to skirt around that like my whole life so far. That in itself is a pretty great accomplishment. Uh, just enjoying the journey like day to day and feeling like I'm always like half on vacation and half retired, but not quite either. You know, for a guy who didn't have that that long WWE run, so to speak, you could walk into any arena, even to this day, and the crowd is going to chant Austin Aries and do the five claps. If yeah, they recognize, yeah. If they recognize me now, yeah. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. once they know it's you, uh, so to have that kind of name recognition is, is, a, is a tremendous accomplishment because unfortunately there are a lot of people who will never experience that. Um, so we got to give credit where it's due there. Th there was a moment that was really interesting and it's probably one of the, the more well-known moments in, in NXT history where you came out and you started dancing with, I think it was No Way Jose. Yeah, you started dancing with him and and having a, you had that big smile on your face. And this is at the end of the show, so the show is mm. about to 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 click off any moment. And then suddenly you beat the hell out of the guy. Yeah, and it's like it's it's stuff like that. I don't know, man. No one's gonna forget stuff like that because it's hilarious. It's like, yeah, that's Austin Aries, man. You you never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> you know, it is what guy's it is. a real guy can be a real son of a bitch. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like like a lovable jerk, you yeah, know. He's kind of like a, he's a lovable jerk. Like ah, 
That's it. Yeah. That's it. But we can't stop watching them there. We know you got a big appearance coming up at the River City Wrestling Con, which coincides with literally the, the largest, the most guests, the biggest venue they've ever had coming up June 8th and 9th this year. What can folks expect who are going to be live in attendance at the River City Wrestling Con? Oh man, well, um, it's cool for me because I have uh, my 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 pops lives in St. Augustine, so I'm there quite a bit visiting, and I've gotten to know St. Augustine area, and uh, it's really beautiful around there. Um, so that's cool uh, that you know these two days will be there. Um, man, I mean, it's like kind of the who's who, right? If you're a pro wrestling fan, um, it's you know everybody you could think of from legends to you know current wrestlers um it's one of these big festivals one of these big cons go go meet your favorite stars um you know i'll be there including for, austin aries right yeah man I'll, I'll be there you know getting getting back out there and i'll i'll be uh, there for i think both days have my table set up um you know i'll have copies of my book which i'm going to be trying to get in as many people's hands as possible um I may even be bringing my uh, my Ring of Honor DVD collection, which uh, I recently took out of my storage unit. And, uh, you know, I've been thinking about putting them up for sale, right? Because I'm not much of a collector or, or a nostalgia guy. And I thought maybe other people might enjoy having them as part of their collection. So um, I might have those with me at, at my table. And, uh, and yeah, and, and maybe even holding uh, some little, um, I call them healing sessions, right? Uh where we just do a little bit of movement, a little bit of breath work, a little bit of meditation, just real basic stuff, right? Just, you know, 30, 45 minutes, talk about the uh, how powerful these these healing modalities can be in just our overall mood and, and you know, sense of wellness. As we kind of navigate this life, right, uh, we're all helping walk each other home. And so anything I can do uh, to help, you know, offer something that might make people's walks home a little easier or a little more enjoyable um you know that's kind of where my where my thought process is now like i say man like you know i'm an entertainer right give them the bread in the circus and they'll never revolt duke right you know that saying absolutely yeah absolutely. so i've been in the circus for 20 20 plus years right um but i'm i'm far more interested at this point of trying to you know help people solve problems and not just distract them from them you know, and, and uh, find ways we can be of service. And, you know, if we use this silly little platform of pro wrestling, you know, this this cool art form that we, we've we all uh, learned to love um, and we use that as the kind of the thing that kind of binds us and connects us all, but then do it to actually uh, improve each other's lives, not just kind of keep kicking the can down the road and, and, and ignoring and, and staying distracted from all these things. Uh, so, yeah, so I want to start trying to, you know, facilitating uh, – little healing sessions like that to maybe just, you know, um, introduce some of these concepts to, uh, to wrestling fans or anybody really that, that is interested in, in kind of, you know, learning about these things and, and how powerful they can be. I love that. I love that. We're all, uh, on a path to, to help each other get home. That's, that's pretty cool. That's a, that's a hell yeah, of a man. way to say it. I love that. Yeah. I, I gotta ask because you're a guy who lived in Vegas. You, you, you travel <laughs> all over the world, spent time in, in, in India, so, but you look like a million bucks. Always stayed in great shape. Always had the abs and what have you. What, what's your what's your indulgence? What's your food of choice specifically? Like, if you want to have an Austin Aries meal, if you want to have a Daniel meal, yeah. Uh, what are we talking about here? I mean, I, I've always, man, I've always loved pizza, right? And uh, got to be careful saying that these days because of the conspiracy theorists. My jump on that, think that's lingo for something else, but it's not. I actually genuinely enjoy pizza. Um, and so, but I've just learned ways to make it vegan, um, you know, obviously with a different kind of cheese, maybe a nut cheese or something, you know, play with the crust, get, you know, you always get a little healthier version of crust. So there's always still ways to make our indulgent foods and just kind of, like, you know, level them up, especially if we uh, don't mind cooking a little bit doing the work ourselves, we can really control the ingredients. So, uh, man, you know, if, if, if I'm going to get naughty or whatever, that's probably it. You know, pizza is, is, is my, is my thing. But, but what uh, is the pizza? G give it to me. What's, oh, I, want, I want an Aries pizza. What, what am I having? Here? I mean, it's just, honestly, it just depends what I have, what I have in the fridge. That's, that's, that's my style. 
give me whatever you got and let me make something delicious out of it. Um, nice. You know, uh, prob- probably do the, you know, make the sauce myself with some, with some garlic and onion or something and just like a tomato sauce and maybe use a little coconut sugar to sweeten that and uh, a little salt, and get that nice little balanced flavor. And then, uh, you know, fresh basil is always a nice thing. So I mean, chop up some fresh basil and just kind of toss that, mix that up in, in the, in the sauce. Uh, and then maybe, yeah, maybe we do some olives, right? Maybe some black olives on this one. Uh, and we got some green olives there. So we're going to do a little bit of olives on there and some red onion is going to be good. Um, and uh, and then, yeah, a little cat, this cashew cheese, right? We'll see you make like uh, soaked cashews in hot water. You blend those up and you put a little nutritional yeast in there, maybe a little bit of apple cider vinegar, give it a little bit of tang and then uh, and little spices. And you get like a nice little cashew cheese. You do little dollops of that cashew cheese on the olives and the red onion. Um, yeah, you know, something like that. And then if you want to get really crazy and some people love it, some people don't. I got some pineapple. If you want to sprinkle some pineapple on one, you could if you're a pineapple on pizza person. But if we're going to put some pineapple on, then we got to throw a little bit of jalapeno peppers on there, too. Right. So you want to get that that's the spicy and the sweet together. Right. So yeah, man, that's uh I I, I really enjoy cooking. Uh I, I you know, I like being in the kitchen and, and uh, cooking for people. I mean that so, sounds awesome. I, I just put pineapple in my salad for lunch yesterday. So you know I'm, that's great. Yeah, I'm, pineapple and salad's good. Yeah, I you know what? I'm eating more and more raw fruit uh, and, and veggies and, and less and less cooked foods. And uh, the more I do, the better I feel. Um, you know, I just did a three day water fast, uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, benefits to that. Um, so I'm always, I've always been interested in, in health and food and obviously like the things we consume, um, we become, it's just so important, right? So whether it's what we watch and listen to who we watch, who we listen to, what we eat, uh, you know, what beauty products we use, what, and then just what material products we use, the things that we consume, we become. So, becoming more vigilant and more educated and and being a conscious consumer and really understanding the choices we have and the impact that these choices make in the big picture interests me. And so, you know, food is just one area where I've always been kind of like hyper vigilant around how I'm consuming, Uh, you know, because I think the only vote that really matters is the vote with our pocketbook, you know, um, where we spend our money, what we what we put intention into, what we put our, our energy into, money's a form of energy. Uh, we grow that, we create it, you know. So we support industries that are unethical, that you know contribute to a lot of negative energy. Well, then that's the world we're creating. So, anyway, sorry, little little tangent there, Duke. No, oh, you you nailed it, man. You nailed it. Listen, anybody listening right now, um, because. Ultimately, somebody is discovering you for the first time, and they're going to look you up. Uh-oh. What's the best way they can follow your journey uh, going forward? Uh, I mean, Instagram is probably what I use the most, um, and that's just at Austin Healy Aries, H-E-A-L-Y. Um, you know, I, I po- probably post on there the most. I'm on Twitter at Austin Aries. I don't really post on there much. Twitter, I don't know. It seems a little too toxic for my liking. Um, so I just kind of stay off of there as much as I can. And that's really about it. I don't really do a whole lot else. No TikTok or anything like that. I uh, hate to disappoint everybody. Uh, probably still have a MySpace login, but nobody's, <laughs> probably nobody cares about that. That's cool. Listen, I saw something that said LimeWire is coming back. So, I mean, listen, man. We're, hey, we're what's old? Is, yeah, what's old is new again, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, seriously. Listen, you know, Austin Aries, you're a guy, again, that uh, legitimately you're one of the most influential wrestlers of the past 25 years. There's no question about that. A lot of people, doesn't matter what promotion you turn on today, you can look at the things that they do in the ring and you you know, you know, Austin Aries, especially your time in Ring of Honor, uh, you you were doing that. You know yeah. what I mean? Your, your, your time yeah. in, in TNA, you were doing that. And guys are doing that still to this day so you know kudos to you for that um if there's anybody out there who doesn't allow themselves to to be put in a box you know doesn't allow the world to define them they define themselves and what have you which puts them in a position where they're not always uh politically correct they're not always uh doing what society wants them to do today 
what do you say to those folks? Do you have any advice for them to take us out? I think it's just important to stay true to who you are and understand that all the answers that we're seeking uh, uh, are going to be found within ourselves and not externally. So if, if you're looking to other people or things to validate you or to make you feel good about yourself, that will never work. You'll never be satisfied. You'll always need the next, the next dopamine hit, the next like, the next comment, the next validation from somebody or something. Uh, so, you know, for those people who kind of travel their own path and, and find themselves um, sometimes on the outside looking in, just stay true to who you are, what you believe in, follow your intuition. Um, you know, a lot of the answers I've realized for me, I couldn't think my way out of situations, but once I started to be able to quiet my mind um, and, and go with my, my intuition and my energy, um, the answers uh, start to become more clear. So um, we, need, we need more people that are willing to uh, question conventional wisdom or at least think for themselves or be, not be afraid to stand um, in their own space that maybe doesn't align with where the vast majority of people are. So, um, you know, keep being the torch, hold the torch so that when people are ready to light their own torch, they have, they have a fire to do so. I want to remind you to check out Zencaster, Z-E-N-C-A-S-T-R. That is my favorite program to use for all my recording needs. And the great part is not only do they have audio, but they also have video options as well. So whether you're video conferencing, podcasting, just catching up with friends and loved ones, you definitely want to check out Zencaster. They have uh, paid subscriptions. They also have a free version, which I'm actually using right now. Transcripts, the whole nine yards, and even, get this, Zencaster has started to do hosting. So for all you podcasters out there, if you're looking for a host for your show, please consider Zencaster. You will not regret it. I'm telling you right now. Once again, Z-E-N-C-A-S-T-R. Made on Zencaster. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jake Logan, and you're listening to Duke Loves Wrestling. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Independent wrestling. It's something that's near and dear to my heart. It's something that I will never stop talking about. It's literally the, the heart of the wrestling industry. No two ways about it. And every now and then you, you come across people who you just know, like, wow, not only is this a special person, this is a person who's necessary in this industry. This is a person who can literally change lives in the wrestling industry. And I'm not just talking about changing lives of fans who get inspired, but changing the lives of, of their peers. I truly believe that about our next guest here, just a, a, a quality human being. And, and I'm so excited to be able to uh, help them tell their story to a certain extent and, and share them with you, the listeners. So without further ado, welcome to Duke Loves Wrestling, Mr. Jake Logan. What's going on there, bro? How you doing, man? I, I appreciate you having me on. That was quite an introduction. I really appreciate that. <laughs> You know, Jake, I, I, I thought I was going to have you on and we were going to, you know, play the game and, and, and all that other good stuff. But just talking to you, bro, you just you're a good person and a multi-layered person who I feel like we, we really need to kind of shed a light on the extent of who you are and in, in, in wrestling, because there's a lot going on here. So I want to start with your dad. Who, who is your dad and, and who is your dad in the wrestling industry? So my dad is a businessman through and through. He runs and owns Top of Texas Pro Wrestling. Uh, it's been running weekly every Saturday night for the last 15 plus years. He goes under the name Jack Logan, uh, and he's been Jack Logan for around 24, maybe 25 years. Well, shout out to uh, Jack Logan. You, you got a hell of a son here. And... <laughs> It's pretty cool. So, so your dad's been a promoter. He's been a wrestler, right? So my dad, he'll tell you he wrestled in the army, but what they were doing was more like backyard type stuff. Um, sure. 
<laughs> he told me a story of one guy almost breaking their neck because of a pile driver and you know they were just kind of being dumb but my dad mostly managed wrestlers on the outside of the ring um and he still did even when he went uh became the owner of his own company that's awesome that's awesome so you were a young person who got to see your dad own and operate wrestling promotions be a manager and not only deal with what happens in the ring, but also the stuff that happens behind the scenes, right? Yes, sir. Talk to me about that. Just, just that level of education, because it's, it's something that most people do not have. You have exceptions to the rule. I mean, the the biggest exceptions that we can talk about right now are, uh, the rock, Cody Rhodes, uh, even, you know, Natalia, Bret Hart, these are folks who literally grew up in the business. This is a family business for them, and it is for you as well. So just talk to me about the nuances of being somebody who's been that close to all aspects of pro wrestling. I definitely learned most of what I know through my dad. Um, my dad's the one who smartened me up to the business, um, and it, he felt like he kind of had to at a very young age because (laughs) I remember we were living in America's Georgia and there were shows going on in Fort Valley, Georgia. And I remember my dad was managing this guy named Bob Wire to the ring. Bob Wire was going against this guy named Mean Mike Payne. And uh, after the match, it could have been during the match, I saw Mike Payne, who always came to the ring with kendo sticks, start beating the hell out of my dad with a kendo stick. And I'm maybe six or seven at the time. And I am freaking out seeing my dad just, <laughs> just getting beaten with those kendo sticks, man. And I was crying my eyes out and my mom didn't know what to do because I just wouldn't calm down. So after my dad was done, after his spot was over, he went back to the back. My mom had to bring me back there to show me that my dad was okay. And, <laughs> and I saw Mike Payne come back from the locker room and I just wanted to, you know, start kicking him in the legs as hard as I could. And then I see him hug my dad and I'm like, what's going on here? You know? And, um, so it's, uh, it's how I found out. And I was really mad at my dad because <laughs> I thought he was just getting the hell beat out of him. Um, and even afterwards there were so many bruises on his back and I just, but my dad let me in, let me in on what was going on, and um, I actually didn't even want to become a wrestler by that point yet. Like I, I loved it, you know. I had all the action figures and everything, but I didn't even want to become a wrestler until I saw WrestleMania 19 with uh, Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho. That's the match that made me want to become a wrestler. And then once I saw that match, like I was gung ho about it. So my dad did everything in his power to help me get to that point. My dad taught me both the business side and the professional side of uh, pro wrestling. And he told me, you know, there's going to, there's going to be a lot of things about the business that you're not going to like. And there's going to be so many things about the business you're going to love. Wrestling can definitely hurt you and it can also benefit you. But my dad made it to where, Uh, I started wrestling at 17 years old in Texas. You can be tried as an adult at 17 years old. So my dad told me that when I turned 17, I could start wrestling. I was actually supposed to start refereeing when I turned 16, but a football injury led me to having shoulder surgery. And we kind of just, after I got cleared, uh, we just kind of, you know, let that take a back seat and started, uh, got me back on the path of training to become a wrestler. And so my first match was on my 17th birthday, uh, May 22nd, 2010, against Cody Jones, who is the son of legendary uh, Mr. Ebony Tom Jones. But my dad has been um, a very, very big influence on my wrestling career and what I've done up until this point. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's that's an awesome uh, background story there, origin story. Um, sounds familiar, you know, it, it's, it, I, I don't know if I'm talking to uh, Jake Logan or if I'm talking to Cody Rhodes, my goodness, <laughs> sounds very familiar there. Um, one of the things about you, Jake, that I find very interesting is that 
you have your reputation, a big reputation, as being one of the more professional people out there on the Florida independent wrestling scene today. And that's not a knock on anybody else, but it certainly is uh, a highlight and a, and a compliment to you. Michael L. Ray was on the show and he had, you know, identified that. And I thought that was an interesting call out. So I did my research and asked around and was pleasantly um, surprised at how much that's the story. That's who Jake Logan is. Yeah, he's professional, man. He's 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 on time and, and he doesn't cause any trouble. He's always looking to help out. He's always thinking of ways to uh, help his peers and to improve upon whatever's being promoted. This is this is the story on you, man. So talk to me about that, because knowing where you come from, influence of your father, how much does that impact who you are today in pro wrestling? Definitely 100 percent appreciate anybody and everybody who says that about me, because it's been a long road. It's uh, I, I hit my 14th year on the 22nd as an active professional wrestler. And um, that that comes with having a bad reputation in the past. Um, and it wasn't intentional, you know. Um, when I first started, um, you don't see hazing too much in, in many, uh, uh, you know, training academies. But it was real for me. It was, uh, it was pretty bad. I, you know, growing up as the son of a promoter, I had a lot more to prove than everybody. And no matter how much I would prove people wrong, people would still say, oh, well, he's the son of, of a promoter. So he got this handed to him. You know, I, one of my biggest accomplishments in professional wrestling was becoming the youngest NWA national champion in history. And I was so proud of that moment, but it was at the same time shot down by a lot of people because I won that title as the son of a promoter in my dad's promotion in my, my hometown, you know? Uh, so as proud of that moment as I was and still am, it just kind of got overshadowed by hate. Um, I would also, you know, make my rounds around cities in, in Texas and, you know, people would say one thing to my face and I would hear that they're later talking bad about me because once again, I'm the son of a promoter. So in my head, I felt that I had so much to prove that I didn't want to be friends with anybody. I didn't want to help anybody. I didn't want to be there for anybody. And it created this ego because even though there were people talking, like there were also some promoters who would see that, you know, I, I do have something to me. So I would, you know, get a championship put on me here and there or, or something, or I'd get a, a spot on a card against a name. And, and whether the promoter sees something to me or not, it was the locker room was, he's the son of a promoter. So of course he got it. And so I, I got, I had a bad reputation of, treating people the wrong way because I always thought that people were out to get me because of my rep because of who I was. Um, and so I moved here to Florida about five years ago and it really took my wife to kind of sit me down and be like, look, there are people who are constantly going to talk about you, but you have to tone it down. You have to stop stop running all over people because you think that they're going to hurt you in some form or fashion. And, um, she really opened my eyes. I, I made a really long public apology through Facebook. I, I tagged as many people as I could that I thought that I may have hurt in the past. Um, and now, now I'm at a stage in my career where helping people makes me feel good. That's awesome. Again, <laughs> I'm telling you folks, there's something about this Jake Logan guy. Uh, I, I'm all in. I, I'm all yeah. in on this guy. I think that he is a a testament to what's good about pro wrestling and somebody that, you know, for all of you promoters out there, especially our friends who have these big promotions, you need to call this guy. You need to reach out to this guy and you should do it 
relatively soon before it's too late because <laughs> somebody like this just adds to the the overall atmosphere in the locker room in the company you know just being there a guy like jake logan can make that place a place that people want to continue to be so you know and i'm as as somebody with a lot of experience in management in different industries somebody who's been responsible for recruiting and hiring and training and promoting folks, someone who's been responsible for uh, developing managers, taking businesses that maybe were underperforming and making them, you know, multi-million dollar uh, profitable businesses. I know what I'm talking about here. This Jake Logan guy, something's, something about him. Folks, tap in. All you promoters, tap in. Hello, WWE. Hello, AEW. Hello, TNA. Tap in. I don't know what you guys are waiting on, but you better, you better jump on this train. Anyway, uh, you brought her up, your wife. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you right now, and I can say this where I'm at, because as far as I know, you're down south in Florida. I'm, I'm here in Boston, so I can say this and not mm -hmm. get my head ripped off. She's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to put that out there. No disrespect, <laughs> but it's a fact. She's a cosplayer. Yes, sir. And she's very good at cosplay. So this isn't just playtime. She she's like a professional cosplayer. Like this is a thing, right? Yes, Talk sir. Talk to me she's, about your wife. She's amazing, man. She uh and it's it's probably gonna make her blush a little bit that I'm talking to her on air like this. But um she's just my saving grace. You know, she's helped me so much in life and in, in my faith and everything and every aspect of life. Um, but yeah, she, she's a cosplayer. We both are. She got me into it. She's, she's in love with it a little more than I am, but at the same time, I love, I love whenever we are at a comic con and the attention is on her for once because She'll go to go to these shows with me, man, and she'll see people taking pictures with me or getting my autograph for one to, you know, buy it, buy something off the merch table and people just admiring me. And I love getting the chance to see people admiring her for her work and her hard work and dedication, you know, and she's so deserving of it. Um, she puts all all her time and effort into these cosplays when she gets an idea in her head, like she's made three predator cosplays, like from the predator movies with Arnold Schwarzenegger. She made all like three different co uh, cosplays hand painted every single detail, spent hours with a, a 3d printer and everything. And man, she is just killing it right now. She's working on uh, her, a remake of her Majin Buu head. Uh, her favorite, uh, one of her favorite anime characters is uh, Kid Boo from Dragon Ball Z. So she's working on that right now. She also hand paints uh, anime bags. Uh, she has her own Etsy shop called BlurredShop.com. Uh, that's shop with two Ps. Um, and uh, man, she's just, she's killing it. And right now she's looking at possibly selling some of her Predator heads as well. And so I know that she's going to be making great money once she does start selling this stuff because I'm so proud of her, man. Shout out to uh, Mrs. Logan. You know, say that that Etsy shop one more time for me the the uh, so folks can check it out. Yeah. It's BlurredShop.com, B-L-E-R-D-S-H-O-P-P-E.com. Blurred, black nerd. Okay, so sure. she's got all the nerdy stuff out there. You already know. Uh, check it out, folks. You know, we, we have a, a strong, blurred community who listens to Duke Loves Wrestling. So I know that they're going to be checking it out even before this conversation ends, which is cool. So, you know, we always Thank love you. to support our um, small business owners and, and folks who are out there doing something positive. And certainly, uh, Mrs. Logan, she's doing that. And certainly you are doing that, Jake. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, now, you are an entrepreneur in your own right as well, right? I am, man. I have uh, my own t-shirt company called Passion Apparel. I don't stick to just t-shirts. If uh, 
Uh, if you're looking to get some keychains or water bottles or coasters or anything like that done, I'm I'm the guy to do it. You know, I uh, my wife bought me some equipment a couple years ago for Christmas because I wanted to start selling my own t-shirts and and you know making a profit back. And um, so it turned to other wrestlers coming up to me and being like, bro, where'd you get your stuff done at? And I'd be like, well, I made it. And they're like, no way. How much do you charge? And at the time, I didn't really think about it. I was like, let me get back to you. Let me get some more equipment. And so it became a thing. Uh, It's called Passion Apparel. Um, I've got my own Instagram page for it. It's Passion Apparel 23. Um, And then, yeah, man, I'm I. uh, looking to apply for a small business loan to open up my own little shop so that I can uh, get some more machines going all at once and do multiple orders at once and, um, you know, start an online store too. I'm telling you, this guy, he he just doesn't stop, man. He's He's got his hands in a few different uh, things there and, and making it happen. Jake Logan doesn't sit still for long, but certainly <laughs> this is somebody, again, I just – I like this guy. There's something about this guy. I'm never wrong about this, folks. When I when I tell you to pay attention to somebody, it usually becomes somebody who is a hit. And Jake Logan's a hit. You know, not only as a wrestler, but just as a as a leader, as a person who should be around. I would not be surprised if this guy is an executive for a major wrestling company or any other company in the not too distant future. That's how like interesting and and sharp and and really you know put together this guy is and, and if the duke is saying it like that it must be true folks you know that anyway jake <laughs> 2024 i mean we're almost halfway through this year what can folks expect out of you to wrap up this year uh 2024 is going to come along with well the rest of 2024 is going to come along with a lot of changes um and you're going to be seeing those real soon. I've got some bookings coming up, but I always encourage people to follow me on Instagram, Facebook. Um, I'm not on Twitter too much, but I do try to check up on it every so often. So you're more than welcome to follow me on there. And you can just look up Jake Logan on any any type of platform and you'll find me. Um, But yeah, man, uh, like my dad, he's going to be doing a whole revamp uh, with top of Texas. Uh, and I'll say that without getting too much into detail, but it's going to be pretty big. Um, and uh, it's going to be something that all parties involved are looking forward to. Well, listen, you know, Mr. Logan, you are welcome to be a guest here on uh, Duke Loves Wrestling when Top of Texas is ready to uh, reveal the revamp to the world. Certainly. Definitely welcome on the show for that because I have a soft spot for our friends down in Texas. You, you folks know we've been listening to the show for years. Always, always am, am willing to uh, highlight the best and the brightest down in Texas. And certainly, uh, sounds like Mr. Logan is someone who should be on that list. So come on down, brother. It's time for you to be a guest on Duke Loves Wrestling. But as for you, Jake, why don't you let everybody know uh, the best way they can follow you? You, you said that you're on Instagram and, and, and Facebook and what have you. What's the handles? Yeah, man. Uh, so you can go to Instagram at official Jake Logan. Uh, you can just look up Jake Logan on Facebook, on Twitter. I need to change my Twitter handle because it's been uh, attached to Control Your Narrative for forever. Um, but it's uh, Jake Logan underscore CYN, um, which I would be remiss to say that I do need to thank EC3 for a big part of my career and a lot of my comeuppance. And so... I will say on air, thank you to EC3 and Braun Strowman slash Adam Scher. His name is Jake Logan. Again, this is a guy who can't miss. Jake, thank you once again, brother, for joining us on Duke Loves Wrestling. Dude, thank you so much for having me, man. I, it was uh, It's a pleasure to be on, and I can't wait to be back. Strictly for the culture. Brothers and sisters, you have seen the T-shirts, the hats, the hoodies, the mugs. In the hands of some of your favorite pro wrestling stars, podcasters, and influencers out there. And now it's time. Visit strictlyfortheculture.ca and you too can be part of the movement. Bigger than sweatshirts and commercial success, Strictly for the Culture aims to build with like-minded people. 
and elevate their position in the world through knowledge, self-love, and a desire to unite. So what are you waiting on? Visit strictlyfortheculture.ca. Do it for the love. Do it for the knowledge. Most importantly, folks, do it strictly for the culture. Till next time, be kind to yourselves and be kind to others. Take it away, Tony Schiavone. This is Tony Schiavone, and we're desperately out of time on Duke Love Wrestling.